while he's coming. It's a short bill. It's not that long. It's about two pages. And so I'm going to uh, ask if the senator would like to make any other comments by way of introduction before we take questions. Uh, Senator, would you identify yourself for the record, please? Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, committee. I appreciate you calling this meeting and allowing us to this bill at the 11th hour <clears throat> because it is a very important bill. And let me say something before I go any further. There seems to be a sentiment that because of this bill, somehow, we hate people from other countries. Nothing could be far from the truth. I have all, we're all immigrants. When you go back far enough, we're all immigrants. And we, we want people to come to this country. We need those people to come to this country. But they, we also have a process by which people come here legally under our laws. And without those laws, we don't have a country. We have, and we have anarchy. So, and that process is really very simple. It's not as complex as a lot of people think. You, uh, you have some education, you have a skill, you pay $723 for an application, you can become a United States citizen in five years or even less. If you marry a United States citizen, you can become a citizen in three years or less. And people are standing in line. Thousands and thousands of people <clears throat> are going through that process right now, legally to become citizens of this country. While at the same time, we have hundreds of thousands that are coming in, and the first act of coming into this country is to break our laws. But this goes much deeper than that. I don't know, Mr. Chairman, how much, law, how much you want me to talk, but I will talk about it. All right. When those people come into this country illegally, sometimes we forget that there's a lot of... Uh, uh, other ramifications involved as far as, <clears throat> as far as the amount of drugs that are brought in. Uh, just this last year, in the year 2018, border agents seized 282,000 pounds of cocaine. Now this is last year in the last 12 months. They seized 2,400 pounds of fentanyl. That is enough fentanyl to kill every citizen in the United States of America, all 325 million of us. <coughs> in that one bust. They also seized 248,000 pounds of methamphetamines, 6,500 pounds of heroin. That's a total of 1.7 million pounds of drugs. And let me tell you something, committee. Those drugs don't just go to Chicago, in New York, in Baltimore, in Los Angeles, in San Diego. They also come to Little Rock, and Hot Springs, and Pine Bluff, in West Helena, in Fort Smith, they go all over our state. And the cost of those drugs, it's hard to put a, it's hard to put a, a dollar amount on it because the millions and millions of dollars that we spend in the state on health care and rehab on treating those whose lives have been impacted by these drugs as a result of not securing our borders. Uh, it, it just it amazes me about how many more of our citizens <clears throat> have to suffer needlessly. I mean, what is the magic number of victims it will take before we become proactive in dealing with this issue? I grew up on a farm all my life. And I grew up in the 50s and 60s. We had a disease called brucellosis back in the 50s and 60s. Some of you who farm are familiar with that. It was, a, it was a disease, though, that you could vaccinate for, and it would prevent it. A lot of farmers, some, some did, a lot didn't. And those that didn't, most of those, once one cow was detected as having that disease, that entire herd was quarantined and destroyed, putting many farmers out of business. You have to be proactive. It, it, and the thing about it is, <coughs> I heard this the other day in testimony of the Senate, <clears throat> that this is a solution looking for a problem. Well, let me tell you something. When you talk to the family that I have talked with the last three or four weeks, 
and the ones who have lost loved ones, and the ones who have been injured, had children and family members who have been injured by an all by illegal immigrants. Just in the last couple of weeks, a young 13 year old girl was ran over in Alabama on her way to school riding a bicycle by an illegal immigrant. That's not a solution looking for a problem. Or the young girl in Alabama, 12 year old girl who was raped by an illegal immigrant who had been deported twice. That's not a solution looking for a problem. So this is not a solution looking for a problem. This is war at all. What could happen, what is happening all over our country? Every, every state surrounding Arkansas has already passed this law. We already know that California is handing out millions of IDs to illegal immigrants. The only difference here is they're allowing those immigrants to vote with those IDs. Do you think that's not coming here at some point in the future? Do you think that's not going to be allowed here at some point in the future with those ideas? Uh, with that, I will close and I'll be glad to take any questions. Okay. Representative Dalby, do you recognize for a question? Thank you, Mr. Chairman.